Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Barrow Motors. It's been a little while since we did a garage tour, show you everything that we've got in stock and what's going on. So I thought we'd do it today as it's fairly quiet. We haven't got that many cars in stock. We're certainly not as stocked up as we usually are, so it won't take us as long. And uh, a lot of you have been asking for it. So here we are in the office is where I sit and buy all the cars and I watch the videos that Toby's edited. Edit Toby sits on the other side and edits those. This is also where I like to sit and enjoy my Wee Philly and DJ Gotti CD, Bang on the Drum. It's a classic. We should probably try and get this in the charts, number one at Christmas. Um, if you don't know, DJ Gotti is also known as David Gott of the lovely car company, aka Car Dealer Pro. If you haven't subscribed to their channel, we'll put a link in the description. You should check them out as well. So yeah, not much to say in here really. This is just where I kind of hide myself away get on with everything keep an eye on everything as it's going on and yeah that's it so let's head out and see what else is going on this is our new showroom slash photo room we used to have the valeters in here we did give it a bit of a spruce up the floor was redone it's looking horrendous again ideally i need someone to come in with some of those nice tiles to go on the floor or even more ideally one of those like epoxy floors you could have it looking like marble or whatever that'd be lovely but it all costs money which i don't want to spend so we'll probably put another lick of paint on it at some point so it's looking a bit fresher again but we've obviously got hexagonal lights up here it makes the cars look really nice a bit controversial that because some people think it looks rubbish and distracts from the car and some of us like it so what can you say the barrow bean our new freshly ground coffee machine that we had installed recently that's been getting an absolute hammering everyone seems to be enjoying it we've got our tv set up now so a when you got people with kids and they're running crazy and whatever and we're not allowed to do that so i say come sit out here and put the tv on we put cbbs on or something and obviously we've got all our number plates that are for sale scrolling through on there if you wanted to buy a private plate they're probably not up to date i need to add one we've got that one the ram one haven't we that came off the discovery that needs to go on there um, you can find those on the Shifting Metal website, which is shiftingmetal.co.uk. Admire, you must admire, A, our little seating area where kids and parents alike, you don't have to have children or be a child, can sit and relax while we get a car ready or whatever. But uh, check out my crank shaft, not camshaft, God, I always get it wrong, don't I? Uh, that came out of the engine block that is out there that I made a V8 wine holder out of i welded this onto uh we've got a clutch plate up here and a dual mass flywheel down here hopefully i got that all right and no one will chastise me for being such a moron and not knowing what i'm talking about and welded it all up so yeah it's quite a nice little side table i think incredibly heavy though so i guess we'll we'll check out workshops and everything else in a minute but in the meantime we'll just have a walk around the forecourt show you kind of what's in stock at the minute and not everything's here because some stuff's at body shop some stuff's at getting wheels done but i'll kind of show you what we got do you like my i try to keep it looking kind of green and look at this side first toby because this i can't even remember what these are called little what are they called like ferns or something i don't know but this one i've been adding my coffee grounds see the coffee grounds there's a nice bit of fertilizer this one over here is loving it this one not so much but i think that might be because i accidentally took a cup of boiling water and poured it in there so i probably killed it so i'll have to buy another one right most controversial car on the forecourt our porsche 911 997 carrera 2s aka mr stone chip it is very chippy and it does need a very good polish as well um it's one of those things like we could paint it up but maybe not a lot of people saying you need to cut your losses and get rid of it etc this is the one that we had uh, rejected to us after like 11 and a half months because there was a gearbox fault which there wasn't but actually by the time we got it back there was a misfire which we've now rectified we've dropped the price considerably since we last sold it which was 
unsurprisingly, well over a year ago. And we are getting a lot of interest on it, to be honest. And it is an amazing car, but we might end up painting up the front or something just to tidy it up a little bit. But it is 20 years old on 100,000 miles. And if you're gonna drive this properly, you're gonna end up with stone chips again. So swings and roundabouts, I guess. Then we'll go around the front. Normally there was another car here earlier, but the Valentin lads have been using our one-way system now and trying to get everything washed off because anywhere that you're on a road like this, you just get all the dust and everything comes up and everything gets filthy. Got a nice little Audi S1. Uh, we bought this via Cars Bought For More, I think. Um, yeah, it's quite nice low mileage. I can't remember, let's have a quick look. 18,000 miles, which probably makes it quite expensive is maybe why it's hung around with us for longer than perhaps I thought it would. We bought this off the back of having bought another one, which sold relatively quickly for a good return. Uh, but this one seems to be hanging around, which is a shame. Uh, then we've got the like fluorescent yellow Swift, the booster jet, the Swift Sport booster jet. They're like a mouthful, apparently. This is quite cool, actually, I think, especially with all the little bits. I'm not so keen on the uh, fuel flap cover and everyone keeps saying you need to remove that rubbish but I think that's factory actually Suzuki do that we have got a Suzuki badge to go on there wonder where it is should we do that now while we're going around because I mean we are walking around and I know we've got it in there and no one wanted to put it on but I can see where the old one was so have you got that Suzuki badge yes should I do it where is it that's the question you yeah, haven't got it then well if you haven't got it to hand don't worry Okay, we've seemingly lost it, but we'll find it again in a minute and we'll come back to that. So, which way do we head first? I suppose we could talk about hot hatches. We've got the Corsa VXR. You may remember this one from, we were gonna raffle it for feelgoodcompetitions.com. Well, in fact, we did put it up for raffle and unfortunately we didn't sell enough tickets to actually raffle the car off, but we did do a cash draw instead and someone won that. So we have had a bit of abuse saying, you know, it was all fake and set up and whatever, despite showing all the ticket lists and everything else and um yeah people say oh you never sell enough tickets to to do a car we're trying you know rome wasn't built in a day was it i started here with cars worth you know in total twenty five thousand pounds and that's now just one car so it takes time calm down don't you know judge other people if you're not doing it yourself then we've got the renault clio uh 200 the renault sport thing another one that got returned to us supposedly with a gearbox issue but just needed a battery in the end uh, so that's all cleaned up now. We had the wheels redone because they were awful. They were curbed to high hell when they came back. If you haven't seen that video, you'll find it up here. And yeah, it's now on the forecourt. We've had quite a lot of interest in that. Lots of people coming in and trying it out. So I don't think that'll be here for too long. Then we've got what has been Jaguar Land Rover corner. We've had quite a lot more here that have been and gone. But this is kind of where we're sticking all the 4x4s and SUVs now. This one came in part exchange just on the weekend. And that was in part exchange for, I think that was for the blue Discovery, not Discovery, for the blue Range Rover Sport that you would have seen in a video where I bought three, including this one and a red one that we'll get to in a minute. Again, if you haven't seen that video, you'll find it up here. So we've taken that in part exchange. It's actually quite nice what it is. What is it, 2012 on 84,000 miles. I don't really like the wood trim inside. It's very, like pine, light wood, but it's been a well looked after car and I wouldn't probably go out of my way to buy one of these in this generation when I can buy one of these uh, so cheaply these days, but still nice to have on the forecourt. Of course, this is our one that's got all the TVs and everything in it. And this is the one that I, uh, you probably won't have seen yet, but if you're watching this on a Thursday, come Saturday, you'll see me taking my niece and her boyfriend to prom in that, which is quite a nice car to take them in there, TVs in the back and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and it's just a very nice thing. Actually quite, quite a weird experience driving that because it is a diesel hybrid. You kind of come to a stop and then you start pulling away again on electric so it's silent and then all of a sudden the diesel kicks back in. I was very tempted to keep that, I do like it, it's very nice. This is our white Evoque. Again, you would have seen us buying this in the video. It's become a bit of a running thing now, isn't it? And we bought this and a black one at the same time. This one is in need of a reversing camera. I think we may have got one, but there may be still be an issue with it. I can't remember, the mechanics are playing around with it. And the black one has now sold. It did have an engine management, as you may remember. And we thought it was gonna be EGR. It says something about EGR, but it turns out it needed a DPF and the DPF was 750 quid 
plus fat, which actually, to be honest, we were all quite surprised was that little. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not that much. And yeah, so that is in there and we are gonna take a Jeep Cherokee, I think, for about a thousand pounds in part exchange. So if you wanna see a video on that, when it comes in part exchange, then do let me know. We'll make sure we make a video. Got a very nice BMW 320D. This came in on a 2012 plate. I bought this from BCA Auctions, I think. I just love this red color. I still, still don't know off the top of my head. I think, is it? No, what? No, that's an Audi color. I was gonna say Tango Red, but that's the Audi color. Oh, what is it? I wanna say it's like some kind of Australian thing. Someone will be in, people will be in the comments telling me what color it is. It, I think it's like the name of, like, is it like Sydney Red or something? It's something to do with, you know, some kind of racetrack in Australia. But yeah, really nice, really nice cream leather interior. This is just a really nice car. This is right up my street. This is, I love a BMW saloon, so I like that very much. Then we've got what was uh, the, will it be yet? This again, you will see in the weekly that will be coming out this Saturday as car of the week for last week. We bought this from Mohammed, who's our friend that we met at G3 Auctions. He's another car trader. This was his personal car. We bought it from him. It's the like, you know, really nice black edition, two litre. Um, it's only on 60,000 miles. It's just super plush inside. I've been meaning to take this home for a drive actually, because yeah, this, this is right up my street. You know, it's like a very luxury saloon. Uh, this will be going onto the Bear Motors YouTube channel as well. So if you haven't subscribed to that, we'll put a link to that down there as well. The plan is that every weekly episode we do, I'm gonna say what our best car of the week is, which we always do. And I'm gonna do a review of that car on the Barometers channel. So make sure you head over there and check that out. Then we've got what is arguably one of the prettiest cars on the forecourt, but not necessarily my favorite. It's the Maserati Ghibli, the three litre diesel. It's basically a Chrysler 300C underneath. So it's not the most refined. It's not the nice highest of quality of things. I do think it is really, really pretty, but I think I was just being a bit mean to it really because it's, it doesn't really live up to how nice it looks on the outside when you get inside, I think. And the fact that it's got a speaker in the exhaust that makes it sound like a V8 when it's a diesel V6, just, I'm just being pedantic and whatever. I just don't like it. But all the same, it is still a very nice car. And funny enough, I did a video on this and I was like, I hate it. And again, we'll link that up here. This is just gonna be like a catalog of videos I've done. And funny enough, people were in the comments saying, Roy, you're never gonna sell that now. And I was like, don't worry, someone will be along for it, even though I've you know, slagged it off, someone will still like it, but it's still here. So I take it back, I won't, I won't be doing that again. We've got the most powerful car on the forecourt at Barra Motors ever, to be honest. The 551, I think it is, brake horsepower BMW M5. Um, ridiculous, an absolute monster, this thing. Again, quite nice mileage, about 80,000, I think. 77 even we took this in a swap against a diesel mercedes cla if you want to see a video on this then let me know because it's quite an interesting story of how it came about the fact that we didn't pay anything for it really obviously we did we swapped it for something else um but there was a bit of a backstory with that with it having been sold to us but it still had finance on it so if you want that video let me know i'll try and get around to it but look at the size of the discs i'm just looking at those now it's like a bin lid, they're huge. Ridiculously comfy, nice heads up display, all the luxuries you could possibly want, but savagely fast being a twin turbo V8. And like surprisingly, I found really feels like really boosty and um, yeah, you certainly feel the turbos kick in, that's for sure. Then we got probably, I wouldn't say my favorite, but this is a cool car. So we got it was to me a really nice cheap there is a video of this coming out but you won't have seen it yet so i won't give too much away uh jaguar xkr so it's the 4.2 v8 supercharged i've had the v8 naturally aspirated before but not the supercharged and my god what a difference it makes it's amazing it sounds amazing um it's not like the fastest or you know best handling car it's a bit like driving a speedboat it kind of like warbles around a little bit but it's fun you know and it's incredibly comfortable, which for someone who's, you know, starting to feel their age a little bit now, that is perfect for me. Then we've got BMW M3 E92. I've wanted one of these for years. They were well out of my range. I remember when I really wanted one of these and I bought the E92 335i instead. 
um, because these were just so much more expensive. But they are, I mean, they've come down in price, but they're still a really desirable car. So I say they've come down in price. What have we got this up for? 21,000 pounds. There is again, a video of this coming out. I won't give too much away. We bought this, you'll be able to see that, see us driving it. Currently it's waiting on a wheel speed sensor because we need to get that sorted out. Um, but otherwise, oh my God, it sounds amazing. Yeah, so that's nice. You're getting a theme now. Someone did say in the comments of one of our videos the other day that it's gonna change, we have to change our name from Barrow Motors to Barrow V8 Motors. And I mean, there are other cars on the way as well that are also V8s. So uh, yeah, I mean, it could be going that way, but I am trying to go slightly more affordable prestige stuff, interesting stuff, stuff that keeps me interested and stuff that people willing to travel for. I just, we don't seem to make a huge amount of money out of things like this Corsa, for example, which actually I've just kind of agreed a sale to the guy who runs our local MOT center. His son's had his car written off and he needed something 1.4, 1.6-ish. So we had this, did him a very good deal on it. Um, it just doesn't excite me, you know, it's just not that interesting. For most people, and we'll get comments uh, on the channel saying this is the sort of stuff you want to buy, sensible, reliable, cheap to insure, cheap to run, all that sort of stuff. Great, but it's just not, size of that dragonfly. There's just not a lot of money in it. And when you've got overheads and we've got X amount of spaces here, let's say 40 cars maybe in stock, I want to be earning big chunks, not little chunks and having lots of work and lots of potential for problems. So trying to move away from that stuff, I would still stock it, but I would much rather have things like the M3 that are gonna have a more kind of discerning customer, but should have more profit in, and it's gonna be more fun to have and they're gonna attract people in. I think that's the plan anyway. Then we got a 520D. This came from James at Chops Garage. It was part exchange with him or something along those lines. He traded it onto us. 110,000 miles, 8,695 pounds. It's actually really nice. The one thing you may have seen when James popped in here before on one of our weeklies, we said we're surprised we still got it because it is a really nice car, it drives really nice. Someone has been inside with some carbon fiber like vinyl trim. So what it needs really is a day to set the valeters aside, which luckily now we're getting a bit quieter. I might be able to task them with that because it just, just look, they haven't done it very well. So it doesn't look very good. And it's putting people off. We've had a few test drives, people really like it, but I think that just puts off, they think it's been mucked around with. So we need to sort that out and get that cleaned up. But otherwise, really, really nice car. Then obviously we've got a huge amount of space. This place is normally full all the way around, sold cars all the way up here. So these two are sold. We'll get to those in a minute. Um, and we normally have little car parts in there around by the toilets as well, but um, we've sold a lot. Struggling again slightly to buy stuff at the right price. I guess everyone's been selling like crazy. Although everyone else also says they've been, they've been dead quiet in the trade. So don't know what the answer is, but I do need to get buying. Um, but I'm placing a lot of proxy bids on stuff. In fact, let me have a quick look. So yeah, must have placed 10 proxy bids on cars today. And I have won a big fat zero. There's no sense buying them if you can't have profit. I think I said in another video recently, Profit's made when you buy it, not when you sell it. You know, if you buy a car for too expensive, you can't add more profit back in. You need to buy it at the right price. So if we can't get them at the right price, let's not have them. Then we've got the Ford Torneo. I thought this would be really good news and it probably still will be. I got it at a pretty good price, I think. What have we got it out for now? 13,295 pounds. It's, it's a bit of an oddball because of what it is. This is a WAV, it's a wheelchair access vehicle. So it's got the winch in the back to get your wheelchair in. You can latch it in, seat belt it all up and everything. Plus it's got seats in the back. Really low mileage. What was it about? Oh, we haven't got an information sheet. I think it's something like 11,000 miles or 18,000 miles at most, but they drive really well. They're great little fans. And you know, the right person will come along wanting it. But it's always funny when you buy a car and you think that won't hang around because normally whenever I buy a wheelchair access vehicle, they're like gone like that. But this one, not so much. Maybe it's because it's champagne gold. I don't know, but um, it will go. And I think there'll still be a healthy margin in it. It's just taking a little bit longer. This, you could probably call this like the custard cream corner because we've also now got like a, like a latte colored, cappuccino colored Citroen C4 Picasso. I I think we bought this via Carsport for more, our car buying service from a local, I 
I think maybe they were giving up driving. It's, it's very, you know, average traffic, isn't it? But it is quite a nice thing. I remember when this turned up, and again, you may have seen it in a weekly, I was quite excited about this because I had a bad back at the time and it had massage seats, but spoiler alert, they're rubbish. It just kind of like went, you know, not, not good at all. Range Rover it is not. Sold SLK, that needs a timing chain, so we're gonna have to get around to that. It rattles like, you know, a bag of spanners when it starts up. Again, when we bought through cars, bought for more. Difficult thing, so if you are buying a car, make sure you really wanna be checking it, especially if it's got a timing chain, when it's cold. Because once that's warmed up, even just like 10 seconds of driving and the oil circulated around all of the chain and the tensioners and everything, no noise whatsoever, but you start it out first thing, it's like <laughs> I imagine totally zoomed in on my head then. Um, so yeah, buyer beware, but luckily we have the wherewithal to do it. That's our nice 420D that we picked up from auction the other day in a weekly, I think, that has now sold. I can't remember what else is we're gonna be doing to it. Some bits and pieces, maybe want some servicing and whatever, but yeah, that did not hang around at all. And I think that's because that's 125,000 miles, which made it really amazing value. And a lot of people will be put off by higher mileage stuff, but I quite like it when it looks good value because that makes that look really cheap and it's then really attainable for someone. So that's why I like that sort of stuff. Peugeot 308. And what is it? It's a two liter HDI. Again, we bought this from someone in part of a weird kind of exchange type thing. This was a daughter's car of a chap whose mum had bought a hybrid Yaris from us. And then they said, did you want to buy this? Because they were doing swaps amongst themselves and there was this car spare. So they offered it to us. It needed some bodywork done. But it turns out it had some kind of issue, maybe with the Ablu system. We can't really get to the bottom of it. I think we're waiting on it having an ECU to be reprogrammed or something. I can't remember, but a bit of a nuisance. Certainly wasn't explained to us, but then when the customer did come back and he said, did you ever get to the bottom of the problem with that Peugeot? Like, what problem? Oh, 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 uh, yeah, thanks so much for not telling us. That was the course that we discussed before. Quite a cool little thing, this. Everyone seems to really like this. The Mini Clubman van. It is quite high mileage. That's the downside of this thing. We took this in part exchange, I think, against another Mini that we had in stock maybe a Mini Cooper S. Um, but yeah, it's quite cool that it's a van, but it's 145,000 miles maybe, putting some people off. But if you want a Clubman van, we have got quite a nice one. It is actually really nice. It drives amazingly. Got an A-Class, very standard. It's an A200D, um, AMG line and stuff, I think. I've been keeping this tucked away here so my other half doesn't see it because she likes an A-Class. She's not allowed it. So that is it, I think, for cars that are actually here and for sale. There's a Porsche Cayman that's just gone over to Western Wheels to have its wheels refurbished. Macaulay will be bringing back a BMW 2 Series that was just had its wheels done. So that will be coming back. We've got more stuff in what we call the scrapyard, but I suppose we should call it something more flattering than the scrapyard, really. Maybe like the, the holding bay, the reserve yard or something. And there's probably some stuff in the workshop. So should we come with me and I'll show you. If you haven't seen it in the weekly already, Toby could probably recut in his section now where he showed the new one-way system that goes around the building, taking us into the wash bay because he did get a lot of good comments. People like that. They like the music and they like the drone shot. So it was very well controlled. Previously, this was our kind of photo corner. So we'd have the cars on an angle here. That's why we've got the AA flag. That's why I did the stencils on the wall. It was a nice kind of backdrop. But now that we're using the showroom, we don't need to use that. And the plan with that is obviously we can get more cars parked up along here, which isn't being utilized at the moment, but it does give us a lot more space. That fence, as you can probably tell by the changing gravel, used to come all the way across here. And this was just our kind of sold car corner. But I had a brainwave and thought if we take these panels out, then we can have a one-way system where the cars drive in, come all the way around into the wash bay, out the wash bay, photographed, parked up. Because previously we were kind of having to pull cars in, pull cars out. It was just a bit of a nightmare. So this gives us uh, a much better system. We might have to put some gates on here eventually, but for now it's working quite well, shuffling stuff around. And in here, we've got a few different things. So this, in the future, you probably see a video of this. It's just a Vauxhall Astra. We took in part exchange for 200 quid against a very nice Jaguar XE that we got from James at Chops Garage again. Um, we might do a video on this, so keep an eye out in the future. 
I don't know how much people enjoy the cheap cars, you know, because I'm not Matt Goodwin of High Peak Autos. People lap up his cheap cars. I mean, we get a lot of cheap cars, so I could do them, but uh, I won't. I won't if you're not that bothered. We've got a reasonably high mileage. Is it that high mileage for 2013? It's on 138,000, I think. 2.2 Evoke. Best engine to have, most reliable, but it has got a problem with the transfer case, if that's a thing. I could be wrong, don't jump down my throat again. But yeah, it needs like its transfer box, the gears and cogs and things fixed. So I think we're waiting on, we've got someone who can repair it for us, but he's waiting on certain gears being available in stock. So it's sat there at the moment, it still drives and everything, but it does just make a bit of knocking in between gears. You could probably get away with it, but we want to fix it up, make it right. So yeah, we've got to wait, it's just parked there for the meantime. And then we've got, the red slash orange Range Rover Sport. This is the one that I said I thought would probably be most problematic, and it is. But it's not too bad, really. So the things that we had was it was going into restricted performance, and uh, I also had a suspension uh, warning light, stability light type thing come on. So we've now narrowed it down. In fact, we went, took it to Causeway 4x4, who's like a local 4x4 specialist. Graham, very helpful chap down there, thinks it's an EGR pipe or an EGR know, pipe of some sort. I've got a little picture, so I'll put that up. So it might mean something to the mechanically minded among you. But it does look like quite of a pig of a job. You've got to get like right down in under there. Adrian's really much around with it. He doesn't really want to do it anymore. He's ripped his arms to shreds. So we're going to leave it to the pros and it's going to Causeway 4x4. The other thing, of course, is that it's leaking hydraulic fluid, which is part of the air and hydraulic system. Uh, it's just got a little minor weep somewhere. So we can fix that. And then with those bits done, We've got actually a really nice car. We just need to sort out the little interior trim bits. If Toby can get a little bit, we'll show you the weird staining around the stitching on the interior of this, which we will get sorted. But then we'll have a very nice car, irritating that it needs these little repairs because we've got a lot of people interested in buying it. We've got non-stop inquiries, but that's the way it goes. A lot of people told me, you're stupid for buying Range Rover, Land Rover stuff and whatever. And I mean, we've got two sat here waiting to be fixed, but that's two out of 12, 15, it's actually not bad odds and it's probably still working out in our favor not probably it is that's just the way it goes they're not all going to be perfect you can't win them all can you but we still definitely have profit in those now if we've done that on that astra or that course of vxr for example where we had maybe 1500 quid's worth of profit in it and then we had these problems we'd be up shit creek wouldn't we but it's not so bad when you've got a big profit in a range rover this is not ours this belongs to ben who is the dad of Jack, the young lad who's got neuroblastoma, and we are trying to do all these raffles for, talking about when we did the course of VXR, and we raised, that raised, I think about eight, 900 pounds for Jack, who needs his 250,000 pounds worth of treatment in America, once he's had all his NHS treatment, because America has a vaccine that they're allowing to use, but the UK hasn't. Um, so thank you for getting involved, because we have somewhat com contributed to that. But Ben, this is his Pride and Joy Porsche Boxster. It's quite a cool thing. Um, but his window regulators are not working, so we're going to get those fixed for him. Came back in on Saturday because he had one stuck down. He's like, it's going to fill up with water and my ECUs are going to get fried, which we didn't want. The last thing they need is more stress, especially as they were taking Jack away for his holiday before he goes into hospital for a four month stay. So we've had it undercover. We've got window back up and now we just need to fix it. Let's continue. This is going to be a long video. I apologize. You're going to be bored out of your mind by now. There's going to get a load of abuse, I expect. But let's carry on around anyway. This is the scrapyard. We're going to tidy it all up. And uh, yeah, this is where everything gets washed. This is Mark. Hello. <laughs> Hello. What else have we got around here? So, oh, this is our black Evoke that we were talking about earlier that's waiting on its DPF to arrive today. So then we can fit that. Hopefully that'll be that sorted. This is our Chevrolet Avio. What a sex machine that is. If you ever buy a car from us and you have problems of it that's going to need us to keep your car for longer than a day or two you could be lucky enough to use this because it's one of our courtesy cars that is another customer's car another Range Rover type product that is having some issues I can't remember what it is nothing major I think it's waiting on a part that'd be sorted um, that's just the way it goes unfortunately again that's another customer's car that is one that we sold when we bought it via cars bought for more Josh didn't pick up on the fact that it clearly had its DPF gutted. And as soon as it arrived back, we all heard it because it was like, sounded like the exhaust had been replaced for a bit of drain pipe. It was like, Goo! So we had to put a DPF back in it. 
make sure everything was up and running, but I think it's had a few issues since then with it clogging up. I think it may have been then. It, the reason they took it out was because of the EGR, so we now replaced the EGR. So if issues, well, that's just car sales for you. Follow any of these people that do car sales on YouTube. Highly recommend Car Dealer Pro. Um, who else does this sort of thing? Obviously Car UK. I don't know how much of his sort of warranties he shows, but Car Dealer Pro and me and James at Chops Garage, obviously the original, uh, you'll see, you know, that's just part of this job. So if you don't like the idea of having to fix stuff after you've sold it, potentially eat into your profit, don't get into this business because that is just part and parcel of everyday life. Right, workshop. This is the gray Range Rover that you just saw us talking about on the forecourt. Uh, they pulled this one in, I think, because the only thing that's left wrong with this, remember when we picked this up, it had no brakes. Turns out what it was, was a blown caliper on the back. It was just leaking out brake fluid. So they've changed that, they've put new brakes on it and everything, all running lovely. But I noticed that when I took my niece to her prom, that we've got an airbag light on. Probably just needs something reset, but that's why that's in now. It's a bit of a mess in here, to be honest. We have got a third ramp over here, this one poster ramp, but no one really seems to use it. Since we put a bit of a valeting bay area down here, I guess we've kind of, the air con machines need somewhere to go, the oil drum, the oil collectors, the transmission stands and everything need somewhere to go. So it's all been dumped in here. We will get a bit more organized, but you know, what can you do? There's our mini from our mini. There's our engine from our lovely mini down there. That's all gunked up with poo inside of it. Not literal poo. Uh, thank you for everyone who got in touch about that, saying they could take it on, or thanks, I'll have that. Or not even thanks, it's like, yeah, I'll take that. It's not quite what I meant when I said, can we get a YouTuber involved to work on it? We have now got someone lined up, uh, the Transformotion lads, who will be able to document it so that everyone can enjoy seeing it being fixed. In fact, by the time this comes out, they would have already done another video where they're picking up two of my smart cars and fixing those. We'll link that in the description as well. There's going to be so many links. Toby's going to have to go through and put so many cards in on this video. Make sure you subscribe to them as well because they were, they were a lot of fun when they came down. You will see them this week, this Saturday, again. I'm selling this week's weekly, aren't I, on Saturday. It's going to be worth watching because that will involve those lads coming down, collecting it, me having to go and find them on my quad bike because they got lost. Yeah, so they're going to do a few projects for me. This is the kind of tyre area and valeting area. Originally the plan was that you could pull cars in here and just about get in, but the reality is it's a bit tight. So it's not panning out that well. In an ideal world, we'd do prep, valeting and things like that, maybe down at the farm or rent another unit. If we can't get planning, we would do it off site. So the cars could probably be like cleaned, valeted, polished, whatever, photographed even off site and then be ready to be brought over here. But for the meantime, we are doing what we can do. Oh, check these out when the lads had to change those thousand pound set of brakes on the Audi RS4 that we had in and replace those because they were warped slightly, but still, I said keep those because they're cool. They're like a split set and a bit like my table at the front, I'm gonna weld up something on there, you know, maybe like a crankshaft or I don't know, you've seen like there's a spring here. You've seen someone, you could get that sandblasted down. I could weld that on top of there like that, square, obviously run LED lights around the inside, do something cool with it, and maybe we'll put that on the raffle website because then that will have cost me nothing other than a bit of time and labor. And we could raise some more money for Jack. So I will do that when I get a chance, but you know, when that'll be, I don't know. So that is pretty much it. We'll go and check out reception where everyone seems to be hanging around, probably because they're trying to hide from the camera. Watch out, Steph, there's a camera coming. Then it's just reception. If you are lucky enough to come and buy a car from us, you can come sit here, do your documents and everything with us. And this is, you know, this is where it'll be done. Things worth pointing out. I don't know if we've ever mentioned these before, but like this is, when we first moved in here, our landlady who lives right next door, um, this was her dad's garage originally. It's been around for donkeys. Check it out, that's Cyril there, the main man himself. And yeah, just loads of history in this place. And, you know, I'm not a Welland, but they are. I just think it's cool. I like having the history. And then we've got Auntie, 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 Auntie Vi. Um, when I was digging up around the back, when we were clearing out, making a bit more space, I dug up this number plate and I was like, oh, JB, that's like my initials. That's quite cool, isn't it? And I said to Jenny, who was our landlady, look at this. I found this. It's my initials. She's like, 
that belonged to my Aunt Yvonne and it was on her car and she had all these information, all these pictures. So that was her taxi. Aunt Yvonne used to do, well, she used to ride a motorbike as well as have her taxi. And she had, what was it called? I can't remember the name because it's not exactly a bloody Vauxhall Astra. A 1932 Wolseley Hackney Class Black Saloon. And that was its number plate. The long and short of that story is she loved that car, drove it everywhere, did everything with it from taxiing people around and whatever, literally as a taxi. This is her Hackney, Hackney license and whatever. This was the record of her licenses and whatever. That was the car itself. And I think when she gave up driving, she parked it around the back of this place. And then when she realized she wasn't gonna start driving again, she set it on fire so that no one else could drive her car because that was her car. And uh, yeah, there it, it burnt to the ground. It probably got buried in the sand dune or something until I dug up the number plate. And then now we've got this story on the wall. Ignore this, we need to repaint. But yeah, so that is it. I've been handed the badge for the Swift though, which unfortunately seems to have a little tab on it. So I'm gonna modify this. We'll stick that on and that will neatly bring us to conclusion of this video. Right. Hopefully that looks all right when it's stuck on. No, me, I'll stick it on and it'll be a Z, not an S. Need to get my little pick tool in there to get that bit out. There we are. It's not perfect, but doesn't that look, but does that even look in the center? It's center enough. No one's gonna question it. That's our little secret. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. Um, I don't think I missed anything. Obviously, the old pumps and everything are still here. Everyone tells me to always remove those. They tell me to paint up these posts and all that sort of stuff as if like money's grows on trees. It'd be nice to do all this sort of stuff and maybe we will one day, but it does all cost money and you know, you probably think I'm rolling in it, but it's not always the case. There's a lot of expense and I'm waffling again. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you can, please like the video. It'll really help me out. And don't forget to subscribe. That will also really help me out and cost you nothing. And in return, when I hit 75,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a Tag Heuer watch worth £2,000 completely free. Just going to pick a subscriber at random. Don't forget, lots of competitions still running on Feel Good Competitions in aid of Jack getting his treatment. So you can find those on feelgoodcompetitions.com. That is it for this time. If you want to see a tour, an updated tour of Down the Farm, where we keep our overflow, part exchange, project and headache cars, let me know. We'll get that sorted while the weather's still nice. That's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I'm back to work. We'll see you next time.